This is a drama recommendation video of a recent Chinese web drama, Tianjin Mystic, He Shen. Hi, you're watching FNUX, where a junkie on good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. Tianjin Mystic, Chinese title He Shen, or the literal title translation would be The God of River, is a period drama set in the Republican China, so roughly between 1920s and 1940s period of time, in the city of Tianjin. This is a web drama commissioned by Aichi, which is a very big online TV show streaming site in China, and the genre is crime, thriller, adventure, and a bit mystery mixed in. The whole drama is only 24 episodes long, and it is one of the best dramas I've seen in 2017. This drama has raised my expectations of what web dramas can be these days in China. No matter what angle you are looking at this drama from, whether it's about the story itself, or the acting, or the technical aspects, this drama really set a very high standard for any TV drama produced in China, let alone only as a web drama. Now, sadly, this drama is not on Viki or Drama Fever or not even properly on YouTube. I have no idea whether it's going to be on any of those official channels uh, anytime soon. And as always, if I find out some information, I would put that in the description and probably shout out on my social media accounts. If you're making a dramas or Chinese dramas to watch in 2017, you really should put this drama on your top 5 list. First, a brief introduction about what this drama is really about. So as I've previously said, this drama is set in the Republican China, which is around between 1920s and 1940s. And the city is Tianjin, which is very close to Beijing. And it is a very important city even till today. It's one of the four municipality cities that's directly under the central government's control. Back when this drama was set, Tianjin was a very important port city. It has a very, very well developed canal systems. So this story is really focused on the water and the rivers and how it affects people living in the city. Our main male lead is named Guo Deyou, and he's called by the people around him as the little river god because he is the disciple of the older river god, an old man who basically is specialized in fishing out dead bodies in the river. Now they are a subdivision of the policemen and their job is basically dive into the water and find dead bodies and take them out. So our male lead character is a super diver who can hold his breath underwater for over five minutes. And he grows up with the neighboring shaman girl Gu Ying, who is also a disciple from her mother, who is an elder and very flamboyant shaman. Our second male lead is the son of a very rich and powerful businessman in Tianjin, and he went to Germany to study medicine and ended up becoming a corner uh, in his own right and came back to Tianjin. He's not interested in business, he's only interested in dead bodies. The two male leads started on a very bad note as they got themselves entangled into some very weird and strange murder case in the river and eventually they become friends and then the story progresses from case to case solving the mysteries and eventually leading to some very big mystery and review that is to do with some cult and also some zombies. This story is also based on a book but it's a very refreshing and unusual story that you don't really see that much on China's TV screen. So what is so great about this drama? The first thing that really blew me away is about the absolutely beautifully executed technical aspects of this drama. Here I'm talking about cinematography, editing, production design, all these kind of hardware thing. Oh, and plus music um, that a drama can have. That is really top-notch work. It really surprises me that it is only a web drama and it's relatively low budget compared to big budget productions. But it really outshines a lot of expensive productions that I have seen this year putting out on China's TV screen. The cinematography style of this drama is cinematic. 
I mean, it doesn't look like a TV show at all. Um, from all the production shots on set that I can see, they really used very expensive film camera to film this TV series. The contrasty, gritty texture of the visual and the framing and the design of shots and how it flows from scene to scene really reminds you more of a film rather than a TV show. The other aspect that's closely tied into the cinematography of this drama is its editing. Its editing is also very well executed. Now this drama is super fast paced, it's not draggy in any way and it gives you the feeling that the storyteller really knows his business. He knows exactly what scene should follow what scene and what shots should he use in one scene and how to best tell the story or tell the particular section of the story using cinematic uh, visual language. When you look at how this drama transitions from scene to scene or shots to shots, you can really tell that they've put a lot of thought into how to structure it visually. This could not happen randomly, it had to be planned first, designed first and then shot on purpose to deliver that kind of smooth and creative storytelling. To support this cinematic uh, film style, they also employed very strong design aspects. It is very well referenced to the particular period this drama is set in, but it is also strongly dramatized. For example, looking at the four lead characters costume design and their makeup. It is based on history and that particular period of style, but then it is very specific to each character. For example, for our male lead, because he is from a rather humble background, he doesn't have much money and he has to work in the river, so he has to move all the time. All his costumes are made of very natural fabric like cotton and linen, and it's very loose and baggy so that he could move easily. But it contains a lot of design tiny touches to pull him out of the crowd so whenever he shows up or wherever he is standing in the scene you can immediately spot him. His particular character and his importance to the storytelling is also reflected in his hairstyle which is very unique. Probably not realistic to the period but it looks very natural when he mixing with other characters and it really makes him shy as the lead character. Now our female lead, because she's a shaman, so she probably has the most crazy costumes I've seen uh, in recent Chinese dramas. It's very, very flamboyant and crazy texture, color, fabric, and the head pieces are just incredible. Again, it is definitely not on the normal side, but when it's set in that period and because it's set on this particular character, it actually doesn't feel out of place. For your information, this is a web drama, so it's not expected to have super high view count because it doesn't go on TV stations. Only the young people who are in this habit of watching dramas online would watch this. But this drama has managed to gather a really big fan base and hit a really high score on a China's kind of important uh, film and TV rating website. And I think all this praise is really really well deserved by this crew. And that brings me to the second point that I think makes this drama so successful is it's very very well gelled acting. Here I mean the leading male character uh, Guo Deyou played by Li Xian and the leading female character Gu Ying played by Wang Zixuan. Both of them are very young actors. Now this doesn't mean they are inexperienced. They are relatively young so for web drama it's ideal because they're cheaper to cast. But both of them are very solid actors. If you've watched the medical examiner Dr. Qin, you would already be familiar with Li Xian who played Guo Deyou, the male lead in this drama. I have to say, I am pleasantly surprised by his acting ability. When you look at his previous works and in different type of dramas, you can really tell that when he's acting in this drama, he has designed a particular way of talking, of acting, of moving around for his particular character that is not seen in any of his previous roles. With only a few scenes, you can immediately detect what kind of character he is playing and this remains constant throughout the show. And our female lead actress is not only pretty, 
but she is very good at delivering extreme lines and actions in the extremely natural ways. Although her character is quite out of there, you still believe she can be a real person and very relatable. People online have been slightly criticizing the second male lead's acting and saying that he's not on par with the other lead characters. In that I have to agree, but I do think he works very hard for this role. And towards the later half of the drama, I actually become more accustomed to the way he acts and I actually become more comfortable with his character and I don't really see a lot of problem with his acting. And our second female lead, she has lesser screen time compared to the other three characters. But whenever she is on screen, she delivers her character, her performance on point. Everybody on this crew knows their business and they're doing their best to give us a really high quality production. This drama was shot during four month period time, so 120 days and for only 24 episodes. That would average 5 days for one episode. Now that is almost unheard of these days for Chinese TV shows because roughly and normally, one episode is shot within 3 to 4 days. To give you an idea for reference, for example, the very uh, expensive big production Nothing Goat Can Stay, which I recently reviewed, that drama is 74 episodes um, in total length and it was shot around 240 days so you do the math it's a little bit over three days so between three and four days per, per episode that's how much time they spend on making uh, that drama and earlier this year we've seen uh, advisors alliance we've only seen half the drama the other half will be aired later this year that drama put together is about 80 episodes long and it was shot um, for 333 days. So do the math again, uh, it's about four days per episode. Now for this web drama, they actually spend five days for each episode. That just shows you how much time they were willing to put into setting up the shots and making it cinematic. And also because this drama has so many underwater scenes, that's why probably that they have to stretch the production time so long. And to my surprise and delight, all those water scenes are actually shot in real water. I have to do this because there have been so many Chinese dramas. When it's supposed to happen underwater, it's clearly not shot in water. It's just post-production and looking super fake. If you've been watching Chinese drama, you know what I'm talking about. Now this drama, every underwater shot is properly shot underwater very impressive for the crew and for the actors to pull that off. Finally, there's another thing that I really love about this drama that I think is not seen before in any Chinese drama, is the way they structure each episode. Now, at the beginning of every episode, it starts with a man in the tea house telling a story. This man is doing shuo shu. This is a traditional Chinese storytelling art performance that you can find in tea houses. And it really, it was the way of entertaining people before there was TV shows or radio uh, shows. People would buy tickets going to tea houses, sit down, have a cup of tea, eat sunflower seeds and crack some nuts while listen to a person telling stories, standing or sitting down. So at the beginning of each episode of Tianjin Mystic, this man in the tea house is telling a story. The story is the recap of the previous episode about what has happened, but it's all talked and spoken and written in the particular way of Shuo Shu style. And then this performer would offer you a very brief outline of the coming episode, the episode that you're about to watch in, again, Shuo Shu style. So you would have a brief idea about what this episode is going to be about, but nothing specific. Then it will be followed by a few shots from a scene in the episode you are about to watch. These shots are picked um, to be ambiguous, so you can't quite know exactly what is going on, but it's kind of there to whet your appetite. And then the title sequence comes in, and then you have the episode, and at the end of every episode, it fades very quickly into black with a sound, and then you roll the credits on one side of the screen, and on the other, you have a smaller screen that is showing you one particular scene that has already happened in the narrative 
timeline, but you haven't seen yet. So it could be a scene that could be sandwiched or put in somewhere within the episode you've just watched, or even in previous episodes. That is adding extra information. It's usually people talking, having conversations that you haven't seen, that help you understand more about how they develop their relationship. While that is playing,、um, the theme song is already layered. Uh, underneath, and when that scene ends, it cuts into the proper sort of end of the episode theme song editing. The very interesting thing about this theme song is it's sung by Xiao Jingtang, a very talented music writer and singer. But the most funny thing about that is he has a nickname in China as a Rain God or the God of Rain, because literally everywhere he goes, whether he's holding a concert or attending a public event. That place will rain cats and dogs, and it has been proven so many times. So that wherever he goes now, people just expect it to rain. So he is the god of rain, and he's singing the song for god of river. Very fitting. Now all the things I've talked about this drama really brings me to one word、uh, in Chinese that is 用心 means use heart. So if you 用心 do something, it means you put your heart into doing something. You are not just finishing it for finishing its sake, but you're trying to go that extra mile. You're trying to make it better than you could imagine. You're trying to test how far you can push something, and you really, really care about what you do. So this word is really fitting、uh, for everyone involved in this production because, from my point of view, I can really tell that this is a very 用心 production, a production that has. A lot of hearts and a lot of tension, a lot of love, and hard work put into it. So I'm just help selling this drama, although I don't think I'm gonna get anything from it. But I enjoyed watching it, and I think it's something that's really worth keeping on your list. So if you are making a drama to watch list, I highly, highly, highly recommend you keep this one on your list. And I really do hope it does get subtitled and put out somewhere officially very soon. So thank you for watching this Avenue X video. I'll see you in my next video. And meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.